I like to greet all human beings all around the world with the universal greetings of peace and the blessings of God be with you. It doesn't matter what your political, philosophical, personal, nor religious beliefs may be. It doesn't matter whether you're the richest or the poorest person on the first face of this earth. It doesn't even matter whether you are uh, the proclaimed toughest to the proclaimed weakest person on the face of this earth. It doesn't matter whether you like me, my YouTube videos, what I stand for. It don't even matter if you give me a thousand dislikes. My 13-year-old granddaughter, Naya, in the Windy City said, Grandpa, if they ain't giving you no thumbs down, that's a bad thing. I said, why? She said, because the more thumbs down they get, give you, the more motivated you get. And she right. Look at that, 62 years old. Still can throw a crisscross and a jab. But anyway, it doesn't matter if you light-skinned or dark-skinned. It doesn't matter whether you are my family, friends, or my proclaimed enemies. I greet all you all with the same universal greeting of peace and the blessings of God be with you. Uh, this evening happened to be uh, Sunday, February the 16th, 2020. The time being, what is it, four or, or three, baby? Four, four, 4.39 p.m. This is February. A lot of people call it Black History Month, so I keep on me a Black History t-shirt. Uh, we got here, uh, tell them who you got, baby. Barack Obama. Who you got here? Martin Luther King Jr. Who you got here? Malcolm X. Who you got there? That's Muhammad who? Muhammad Ali. Right. Harriet Tubman. Rosa Parks. Uh oh. Oh, I That's said Harriet. Rosa here, ain't it? Yes, I said Harriet Tubman already. Okay. Rosa Parks and W. W. E. B. Du Bois. W. E. D. Du You forgot. But, um, but we Nelson have Mandela. a plenty of of Black History people that we can talk about. But what I want to talk about today is. Charleston, Missouri, black history. Now, you have a lot of good black history in Charleston, Missouri. But as far as the leadership in the last 25 years, let me tell you how, what type of leadership as far as black history. With the present, in the past, NAACP, 90% of these uh, individuals that call themselves preachers in these groups. Now, People wonder why my two daughters, my two youngest daughters down here in Charles, Missouri, said they don't have a mother. They know she gave birth to her, but I'm going to show you why. You see, they've been having issues here in Charles, Missouri, just about all uh, since they've been born. Uh, some with white supremacists taken up for white supremacists. Let's go back. And when they was one and two years old, in May, May the, uh, uh, the 19th of 2008, when some of the Charleston Police Department, if you don't have a part of it, don't, don't, don't worry about it, I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about those that came in my house, and I'm talking about the Chief of Police, Robert Bobby Hearns, who's living on the name of his uncle, Warren Hearns, a former governor here in the state of Missouri, may he rest in peace, who's living on his auntie name, Warren Hearns' wife, Betty Hearns, who was a state representative here in Charles, Missouri. And if you look at the history, they Democrats, but neither one of them, they, before, but before he died, they didn't vote for Barack Obama. But anyway, up under the leadership of Robert Bobby Hearns, the police came in my house, Charleston, Missouri police came in my house on May the 19th of 2008, a little bit after midnight. After my two youngest daughters down here, mother had been out in the streets for 72 hours straight using heroin, crack, selling her behind, you name it. They knew it. But then when she run out of drugs and didn't nobody else want to buy no behind, they, they put up a plan. 
You see, they've been trying to silence my voice for the longest. Now, they come to my house and tell me a judge gave them her an expo tape to put me out of the house to take my two children and gave us a court date for June the 3rd, 2008. Now, what judge in his right mind, what law enforcement in his right mind will give a person that's out here on Heron, don't work, I'm working, don't work, give her or any other parent an expo tape. If he gonna give an expo tape, he should have let her stay where she was at, out here selling up behind, and where was what dope house she was going to, and let me and my children stay in there. My children hadn't seen her in three days, in three nights. They really don't, really kind of miss her because when I'm at work, she leaves them in the house going looking for drugs. But I'm showing you a pattern. Now, they took them out by force. I was going to try to stop them, but I was held by gunpoint by one of the, but one of the Charles, Missouri police officers. Told me to sit down. He didn't want no trouble. Now, they took him out and took him to the Susanna Wesley Family Learning Center uh, Women's Shelter in East Prairie, Missouri, about seven to ten miles away from here. Now, these people are used to dealing with the police, Susanna Wesley, and then this present NAACP president. He was working for Susanna Wesley, and most of these black people that's working at 700 Elm Street in Charles, Missouri, they was working for Susanna Wesley. Law enforcement, period. If they you did, when, didn't take a part of it, don't let it bother you. They knew she was on drugs. They took her down to Susanna Wesley. They helped her get out of the state of Missouri to Illinois. My children's was residents of the state of Missouri. She wasn't fit to get them. They took and let her get them. And look here, when I went to court on, on, May, on June the 3rd, 2008, she didn't show up, my kids wasn't there, the judge wasn't there, no state's attorney, no court stenographer, just me and my lawyer. Now, if the judge gave you an expo tape, why wasn't nobody there, period? We know Susanna Wesley, these NAACP leaders, some of these blacks and whites, police, some of the police department, some of these preachers helped them get my kids. They one and two years old. They was going on two and three in July. Went to court, no, no judge, no judge or nothing. My lawyer went to the clerk and told the clerk, asked the clerk, where's the judge at? The, the clerk told my lawyer, like he's stupid, told him that Raymond called up here and said he dropping the expo tape. How can I drop an expo tape that somebody allegedly had against me? He gave him his card his cell phone, his home number, and his office number. And he, and he told him, he told him, them, if they don't find my children, and if my children is harmed, he going to the United States Justice Department. We went downstairs and a few minutes later, the clerk called back up and said the judge said he dropping it. We don't want you to drop it, we want my children. But 70 days later, I found my children in Chicago in the projects with a drug addict mother because these police. Let me show you what they was looking like. Look at this. That's Queen, that's Birdie. That's, Ju that's July of 2008. Look at their condition. Look at Birdie's eye, squelled. Now this is the police department in Susanna Wesley. Some, some of my family members found them. I want you to look at the pattern of the pictures. Queen noticed some of the family members. You look at the way Birdie Arm is. Birdie Arm is broke in this picture here. See, the, you see how she got it raised up? Birdie Arm was broke in this picture. This is who her mama left them with in the, in the projects before I found them with drug addicts. You see this? You see them transacting their drugs right there? You see Queen and Birdie right there? Queen hollering for help now. Now let me show you something. This was July of, of, of 2008. July the 29th, I found them. 
I brought Birdie back on July the 30th, took him to their doctor in Sison. Then he had me to go to uh, St. Louis. They found out immediately. They said Birdie's arm had been broken for a minimum of two weeks. It could have been longer than that. You see, you wonder why they said they don't have a mother. But let me tell you, even after she did that wicked stuff, look at this here. We helped her in Chicago, not Susanna Wesley, not the NAACP. You see the date on that? 9-11-2010. We went up to Chicago in front of a judge. You see that one? 10-23-2010. Two months, a, a, a month back to back. That's 800 miles each trip. We went up in front of a judge to say to try to help her when she got her a drug program. But this is 2020. She haven't did anything from it for them. Matter of fact, in 2009, she had another baby, sold them to two lesbians, and her family called me and asked me would I help them get them back. I helped them get them back. Today, this very day, she's a manager at a Burger King in Indiana. She don't do nothing for them. She don't have custody of none of them children. That's what Susanna Wesley Family Learning Center do. Break up families, knowing she was on heroin and crack, who would give an individual some children that's on heroin and crack? Who, down here in Charles, Missouri, when you Raymond Lewis Ivy, they'll do anything to try to hurt you. See, if I was doing my will, I would have shot and killed a bunch of them down here. But I was doing God's will. I'm still doing God's will. Then, here it is. I got them back. Got custody of them. August of 2008. Then here's a white school bus driver on February the 1st, 2012. My same daughter with this broken arm. The school allowed her, him, at five years old, allowed this white bus driver to be on the bus with her by herself. Pick up by a backpack, backpack break. He took her on the bus, set her on the, on the bus by herself. Shouldn't have been with her. Took a knife out of a compartment, cut it off while it was on the back of her, her back, frightened her. These blacks that was in control, black system principal, black director of transportation, and some of these black teachers, aides, all of them lied. But now here it is. Look what just happened to my daughter here in the family dollar store on the 13th. White female accusing my same daughter with this broken arm. Same daughter accusing her of being barred out of there. That's the, that, at now time with the NAACP help me or my family. Now time has Susanna Wesley supposed to be for children. You know, they don't help all children. If you, if you're a sellout, they'll help you. But when you stand up against them, all they doing is making millions of dollars. And y'all think y'all say I'm violent. I ain't violent, but I talk violent sometimes because when it comes to these babies here, y'all ain't gonna do this to them no more. Y'all ain't gonna have no doggone drug addicts watching my children while they mother go out there and sell a tail for, for, for drugs. That's what she's doing down here with some of them NAACP leaders and some of them police down here. Now, that's what, that's what black history is here in Charleston, Missouri, y'all. Not all people, but these so-called leaders. I'm going to leave as I came. I ain't killed nobody, but the average person will. Peace. Be still.